Right. We'll start with ATK. Hey everyone, welcome to the detailed Legion Raid guide series. This is a guide to the Legion Raid Coco Seda. Coco Seda. If you're planning to run this raid blind, feel free to skip this video. The video will cover the gate 1 of the Legion Raid Kako Sedon. Let's get to it right away. Kako Sedon has total 3 gates in the raid, with 1 hidden last phase at gate 3. Hang on guys. Where's my cute pen? These are all my old notes. Super armor. Gems. The easiest way to earn silver is to have ults. And I thought you were pretending to write down for most of the time. No, 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 I wrote everything down. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna watch this video, I'm gonna take notes, and then we're gonna take the quiz for gate one. Okay, ATK, go. Hey everyone, welcome to the detailed Legion Raid guide series. This is a guide to the Legion Raid Kako Seidon. If you're planning to run this raid live, you're free to skip this video. The video Seidon. will cover the gate one of the Legion Raid Kako Seidon. Let's get to it right away. Kako Seidon has total three gates in the raid, with one hidden last phase at gate three. The Legion Raid boss itself does not have overwhelming HP amounts, but comparing with future Legion Raids coming up like Roshaza, this is where a lot of special mechanics take appearance. Was it? Normal attacks are starting huh? more of additional debuff attributes like added burn damage. No, well. no, he's going soup. I don't get it. Wait, he's so fast. I don't know. I don't get to think that I didn't understand. I go, I, we, go, we gotta go slower. Roshaza. This is where a lot of special mechanics take appearance. Normal attacks will start a lot more of additional debuff attributes like added burn damage as well. First of all, let's talk about the main mechanic for all Kuku skates. Okay. Mayhem gauge. Mayhem gauge. Just like by Kiss Gate 3. You'll have this mayhem gaze throughout the fight. Okay. Other than Cuckoo's auto melee attacks, his special attacks fills up various mayhem gauge. If this mayhem gauge fills up to 100%, you'll transform into a clown. Oh, cute! When you're transformed into a clown, you take additional damage, so if you happen to be a very squishy character, you must watch out when you transform. Okay. Also, <laughs> every time anyone transforms into a clown, Cuckoo receives an additional defense buff that stacks up as well. What? So it's like the Vicus thing, but not like the Vicus thing. If you get full gauge, you become very, very squishy. You make him sound depressed. He sounds drunk AF. <laughs> Mayhem gain at full equals squish. Uh, reduce 3% damage taken per stack. Permanent, but can be cleansed. By Esther Inanna Sidereal. Ooh, I've not seen. I don't. I, 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 I have not get, got to see this this ability very often. This only by accident. Sidereal's buff can only be deleted by Esther Inanna. When the mayhem gauge is fifty percent, the bar UI will turn red and create four small orbs around you. This orb will explode in cross-shaped lasers a few seconds after. You can see the explosion's direction by identifying where the small orbs are created around you. What? This He's talking too slow. Sorry, wait. Say that again. Explosion's direction by identifying where the small orbs are created around you. This laser can infect other players if you hit them too. And when other players get infected, they will create a small red aura down their feet. If other players step on this aura, it will increase their mayhem gauge. This is the like main mechanic where the raid becomes chaotic and hectic if you don't control it. It is best to stay far away and try not to hit your party mates with the infecting lasers. The clown has three skills in your skill bar, and those provide various advantages and disadvantages to the team. Let's go over the skills. Oh, wait, the wait, Q, so what are we supposed to do with the bulls? Let's go over the skills. The Q, the clown will throw <clears throat> a bomb, decreasing everyone's defense on hit. This is including your teammate as well. W, the clown will play his trumpet. Teammates inside a sound wave circle will lower their mayhem gauge, 
but teammates outside will gain mayhem gauge. E-skill. Clown will spawn a present box, which will need to be attacked and be opened with ether inside. If oh. any teammates take this ether, their mayhem gauge will decrease. But it will also create a small explosion around the taker, and anyone hit by this explosion will gain mayhem gauge. Okay. It is recommended <clears throat> to not use the W skill unless you're 100% sure everyone's around the area of effect. You can also spawn the present box away from the center of the map and attack it with the bomb to open it. Then you will have an extra ether ready for teammates to take if their mayhem gauge is in danger zone. Make sure to know the Q skill debuff can affect oh. everyone, including your teammates as well. So be aware of the attack range and explosion range. As some of you guys know already, Legion Ray Coco Sadon is two bosses in one. There is Coco and there's Sadon. You're facing Sadon on the first gate, the big guy. Here are the major mechanics based on the HP lines. 130, reflect stagger check. 110, find a real Sadon or lights out. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Major mechanics in gate one. This is very important. 130. Reflect stagger check. What are those skull and crossbones? Is that like death? Dance time. So the stag so the stagger check so or why? Surely the rest of these. Things. Find the real Sadon. Time. Sixty second reflect stagger check. Fifty roulette. Thirty second find the real Sadon. The reflex stagger check and fighting real Sadon mechanic repeat twice during the fight. So gate 1 has 4 unique mechanics. While these are the major line based mechanics, there are also time based unique <laughs> mechanics as well. So okay. we'll go over them both in detail throughout the video. But at the start of the fight, every player will get 1 playing cards above their head. It could be a heart, it could be a diamond, it could be a spade or a clover. During the fight, Sadon will sometimes spawn a toy box, which will explode into playing card shapes or a bomb. Bomb explode very slowly so it's easily dodgeable, but if it spawns a playing card like heart, diamond, clover, or spade, okay. party mate with the corresponding <laughs> symbol will need to take that drop to drop their mayhem gauge. However, if the wrong symbol players takes the ether, it will explode in a large area and provide a huge amount of mayhem gauge. So it's crucial for everyone to communicate and take their ether properly. Okay. So they're in the progress of the raid. The first major mechanic you'll see is the reflex stagger check. This doesn't seem around too bad. Around line 130, Sadon will create a large magic circle around them and proceed to activate his stagger check. When this mechanic starts, he spawns a purple reflex shield on both front, back, or just in front of him. Huh? These purple shields does reflect damage. What? Reflect stagger. Stagger check. Around HP line 130, Sadon will create a large magic circle around them and proceed to activate his stagger check. When this mechanic starts, he spawns a purple reflex shield on both front, back, or just in front of him. These purple shields does reflect damage to your character, so it is critical to not stagger him on the wrong side. That's the why that. That's why he died. The same as Vikas first gate. So it is important to either save your stagger skills, right. use overwhelm runes, or use a whirlwind grenade. Again, it is crucial to identify where the purple shield spawns first, then stagger afterwards when the orange bar appears. Depending on the party's overall DPS, you can see some of these unique time-based mechanics before or after the 130 reflect stagger check. Let's go with the first unique time-based mechanic. Sadon will teleport to the middle with a unique sound cue. Afterwards, he will spawn a large four divided pizza with all four playing card symbols. Okay. Player will need to find their corresponding shape and stand on top of it before the explosion. If you fail, you will receive a lot of damage and gain mayhem gauge as well. Second unique time based mechanic Sadon will spawn playing card warrior ads. Okay. The card symbols have no meaning, but their initial spawn impact does damage and fills up your mayhem gauge, so it is advisable to focus on dodging. 
These ads do not do much damage to you, but if you do not get rid of them, they will create pools around them that will increase your mayhem gauge a lot. Since they're very annoying, you must take care of them all quickly. Okay. Third, you need Seems simple enough. mechanic. This <coughs> usually wipes progression parties. If you do not have sufficient DPS, you'll see this pattern once or twice. Sayedon will have a sound cue saying about rolling the dice. What? When this happens, Sayedon will roll the dice, okay. choose a playing card symbol randomly, and based on the dice's color, one or three people will be rooted to the ground, unable to do any actions. Afterwards, Sadon will spawn a series of four playing cards that homes to the nearest player. Huh? The team's goal is to have everyone to take the correct card with their corresponding symbols above their head. Since one or three people are rooted, it is crucial to kite the cards correctly to the rooted player. If you oh. have to take the wrong symbol card, the AoE damage is enough to kill an eye level characters. So you must be aware of this mechanic. So you need to, so you need to like, so you need to, so you need to, so you need to guide the the right card to the person who's rooted because they can't move. Did I, did I, did I understand that correctly? What is that one called? The dice one? Why did he say this usually wipes progression party? Because it's rough. Why is it rough? It seems quite simple. <laughs> It seems like it, you know, it makes sense, you know, so it's really you gotta move the card to the person. Imagine you're the only one moving and you have to take all three cards to your teammates. Do the cards not come out one at a time in a random order? So the teammates, they all, they need to like, okay, keep watching, okay. Let's talk more about the third unique time-based mechanic, the dice rolling. There are a few reasons why this pattern gives such problems to progression parties. One. Some party mates were doing DPS too far away from everyone else, so the distance was too far to control the playing card spawned. Oh. Two, few players are being too close to each other for it to be impossible to feed the corresponding playing cards. Three, being rooted way too close to Sadon when he does this mechanic because the card's gonna spawn and then the rooted player's gonna take the cards immediately. <gasps> to avoid these situations, it is important for yeah. all the players to position themselves in orderly fashion before this mechanic. So starts. it's important. So they shouldn't position themselves like that. They should position themselves like how they did in the previously, right? Mid distance away, but like lined up. It can happen at any time. Oh shit! Initially, all players will need to be decently away from Sadon because you need more time to react what symbol card is being spawned. So you don't want that problem number yeah. three happening. As for the so three this players makes who are sense. not the same symbol that the dice is being shown, they need to make sure that they're not close together either for the number two problem. It also helps for the party to predetermine their position beforehand. Usually Pugs in Korea utilizes the six o'clock south position. This is because the Lost Ark UI is placed on the bottom so you have more vision if you watch the top side. So he's trying to get it bottom. into this person. If this particular dice pattern is but really the is in the way. for the party, you can actually use Esther and Nana as well. The Esther can block up the three cards, so all you need to do is succeed one of the cards. We succeeded to blow all four cards up. Probably we were too, way too tanky. But Inanna will be broken by very high chance if you fail all four cards. Cards from the four. You can also kite means. the cards until it disappears. But since the new spawn card sees the nearest player, you will need to watch out to not let the wrong cards reach the rooted player. This pattern also has set patterns as well. The cheat sheet will also be included in the description along with additional videos in the future. So if you have been progressing without big issues, around 110 lines you will see second major mechanic, find the real Sadon, or you can actually call it lights out as well. When oh. this mechanic starts, you'll hear Cuckoo talk about finding out the real Sadon, where lights being turned off and Sadon will appear in X position or times 3 plus 1 on the party members. 
These positions can be predetermined before uh, the battle. So you so have to check if he's at take yours. Your positions immediately when it becomes dark. Seda will also spawn two spinning orbs around them that will paralyze you and it gives you a blindness debuff. So dodging the orbs is crucial. While dodging the orbs, you will need to either notice Seda is firing a gun or giving you a heart symbol. What? Wait, can you hear anything? Watch his hands? I'm so confused. Or giving you a heart symbol. Orbs is crucial. While dodging the orbs, you will need to either notice Seidon is firing a gun or giving you a heart symbol. Guns? <laughs> Heart. Why is that significant? Out of the four Sadons, only one will do a different motion. Everyone will need to stare at the correct one to avoid death. After predetermining a position for everyone, it will be very clear if everyone pings either the gun motion or the heart motion. Korean pub tends to ping the heart for no particular reason. Uh, but it is crucial for everyone to be. So there's only two. So if everyone if everyone only pings for the heart one, then if there's three hearts, then everyone just goes to the corner that's not been pinged. Or if there's one heart, then go to that ping, right? I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Be aware of the motion that You don't have to go. I thought he said you have to go to the location. Oh you just look there. I'll write that down. If DPS lacks a little bit, you'll see another unique time-based pattern before or after this mechanic. Zeran will fire a series of circus balls in the air with a sound cue. Afterwards, it will create a series of donut explosions everywhere around the map. Oh my goodness. It is advisable to focus on dodging this at the time because it will do a lot of damage to you if explosions are stacked up on top of each other. Staying far away from Sadon is a good choice is because afterwards additional circus balls will fall down and duplicate themselves while sizes become smaller. It will split into small. It sounds so tight when you slow down. I literally cannot take the information in when he's talking at his normal speed. It is too fast. I have to. I have to be slowed down. Otherwise, I cannot understand what he's saying. Since directions yeah. will change on every split, it is very hard to dodge. It is crucial to not stay close to the balls at all. If you happen to get hit by any of the circus balls, though, it will give you high damage and a paralysis effect. So explosion size is rather big as well. That can lead to additional combos to your death. So utilizing a time stop or utilizing swiftness. Is it? Can you? Can you finish? There's only the gun lancer left alive, and 28 health bars. Will, will he be able to do this? This is recommended. And at 85 lines, Sadon will close the curtains and turn everyone into a clown. After the curtains are open, you'll see Sadon in the center dancing while clapping his hands. Oh, All nice! Move and stand on top of the corresponding <laughs> play card symbols. Otherwise, being outside a symbol will damage you over time, resulting in quick, quick death. Wait, he needs the to get into his symbol, doesn't he? Q W E R buttons. These are specific gestures you'll be utilizing. Go through the dance mechanic. Oh my god! After time has been passed, <laughs> Sadon will choose one of the four random poses. You'll need to press the same pose. <laughs> On your skill bar, the post <laughs> buttons on the Q W E R keys are all random for all <gasps> players. So you have so to look. One person does not need to call out the skill letter because other players may have the different poses on them. Sometimes oh Sadon will turn God. around and do a pose too. Oh, that's a great pose. You In have to use case, your brain. You what a great mechanic! I love that. The same as the Sadon does. On item level, failing the puzzle twice will almost guarantee death damage due to not having able to recover your health when transformed into It's like something from Mario Bros. <laughs> you didn't listen? What did I miss? Guarantee death damage due to not having able to recover your health when transformed into clown. Afterwards, at 60 lines, 
W Q W E R keys are all random for all players. So one person does not need to call out the skill letter because other players may have the different poses on them. Sometimes Sadon will turn around and do a pose too. In this case, you can choose any pose that is not the same as the Sadon does. On item level, failing the puzzle twice will almost get But they just did the same one. Due to not having able to recover your health when transformed into the clown. Afterwards, at 60 lines, there will be another reflex stagger check. Then at 50, there will be another unique major mechanic, the roulette. Seiran will close the curtains again and open them later standing on top of the giant roulette spin table. The roulette has oh! 8 unique symbols and it will spin total 3 times. The goal is to stand on top of the same symbol on your head. It will switch on every spin so you have to keep an eye on your head to avoid confusion. Also, it is crucial to recognize that there are solid colors and line pattern colors as, as a background. So you will need to identify the background of the shapes that you have been given. Every spins will also have projectiles flying at you between, so watch what them for that as well. What the After hell? After you pass the spinning wheel three times, the wheel will also explode, so just staying far outside of the wheel will help you avoid the explosion. Making so me dizzy? So for the pattern, if you're having trouble finding your spot in time, there are some additional tips that can help you. Let's say your symbol is a spade. Spade on the So they stood here. Could they not also stand here? Or am I have I misinterpreted this mechanic? Wheels always opposite to clover and hearts are always opposite to diamond. So if your symbol happens to be a spade with a line background, finding either your symbol plus looking for a clover with a line background will boost your chance in identifying your spots in time. As battles goes on, any of the unique time-based mechanics can happen again. Additionally, sometimes he'll also spawn a flamethrower tower at this point of the fight that will hinder the what party. The These flame towers fire flames from both sides in a clockwise formation, giving lots of mayhem gauge to people who gets hit. Other than that, it doesn't do much. However, if you leave them there for too long, they will also emit medusas throughout the whole map so it is crucial to take care of them as fast as you can when they appear. Afterwards, the last mechanic will be find the real Sadon for the second time on HP line 30. Since there are still time-based unique mechanics, be on guard and progress throughout the fight to beat Sadon. That covers most of the major gimmicks, and this video will also cover some important normal patterns that we believe is good to go over. Okay. First one. Yellow or red bomb pattern. Seran will hold either a yellow or a red bomb in his hand. Oh, that's white. That's he will dash while spinning around before the that's X white. or a plus impact. The spin attack is very dangerous, so you must keep your distance. The now glow? Show me again. Ah, red glow? Yellow go white. Okay. He will dash while spinning around before the X or a plus impact. The spin attack is very dangerous, so you must keep your distance. <gasps> up, up, up. After the spin, if the bomb is yellow, it will be a plus explosion. If the bomb is red, it will be an X explosion. Right. Make sure <laughs> to try to recognize the staff's position though, because the explosion will be started off from his staff. Afterwards, he'll disappear to do a rather quick outside safe, inside safe explosion. He's going to choose a random party mate and smash the ground with outside safe explosion to an inside safe explosion. Stay far away from the initial circle or prepare to spacebar or dash in after checking the first impact. Second, flamethrower. After a sidestep, Seiran will choose a random player and shoot flames from his mouth. There will also be random flame what? rings throughout through the map. You have to identify them and dodge them as well because they're randomly spawned. If you happen to be a support, this is a good time to use your Rhapsody or Gosset Law to help your teammates because everyone will be taking a lot of damage most of the time. Third, Fear Laser. Sadon will charge up and fire a laser. 
Anyone hit by this will be feared for quite some time. As scary as this pattern is, it has a long animation before its impact, so practicing recognizing the animation is recommended. Fourth, Pigeon Missiles. Zedon will have a sound cue with him taking off his hat and disappear afterwards. What's that? What's he holding? Oh. He will appear in front of the random player and spawn a series of pigeon missiles. These pigeon missiles will fire at a large curve at high speed. Each missile do small damage, but it causes a stun, so staying closer to him causes a shotgun damage, which results into death. The dodging <gasps> positions are usually his right side or behind them and coming up to the front words to avoid the whole travel path of the missile. Fifth, Circle Ball Counter. Zedon will jump very slowly and get on top of the circus ball. The counter timing is very forgivable, so most of the time it's a very easy oh. counter to hit. Okay. However, if counter happens to be on internal cooldown or counters happen to fail, this is one of the most dangerous damaging pattern. Zedon will chase one member and proceed to emit fires along the path. It is crucial to use all your maneuver skills to avoid Sadon or have the support to take shield skills to intercept the hit to get Sadon off his circus ball. Legion Rank Cocoon Sadon is where the game starts and add more mechanics to create more chaos in the raid. It is crucial to avoid unnecessary death because losing a member from a 4 man raid is more critical than an 8 man raid. As long as everyone's in the raid, keep calm and identify each special patterns quickly, the raid itself will be very easy to clear. With that being said, this covers the guide of the Legion raid. Okay, so did I miss it? Or did he talk about those those purple balls? <laughs> did he mention the purple balls? What are the purple balls? What were they? <laughs> Maybe it was here. Well, first of all, let's talk about the main mechanic for all Cuckoo skates. Mayhem Gauge. Just like Bike Escape 3, you'll have this Mayhem Gauge throughout the fight. Other than Cuckoo's auto melee attacks, his special attacks fills up various Mayhem Gauge. If this Mayhem Gauge fills up to 100%, you'll transform into a clown. When you're transformed into a clown, you take additional damage, so if you happen to be a very squishy character, you uh -huh. must watch out when you transform. Okay. Also, every time anyone transforms into a clown, Cuckoo receives an additional defense buff that stacks up as well. This Sadon's buff can only be deleted by Esther and Nana. When the Mayhem Gauge is 50%, the bar UI will turn red and create four small orbs around you. This orb will explode in cross-shaped lasers a few seconds after. Oh, you can see the explosion directions by identifying where the small orbs are created around you. Orbs. This laser can infect other players if you hit them too. Those so are different orbs. Okay, it okay, will create okay, a small okay, red okay. aura down their feet. If other players step on this aura, it will increase their mayhem gauge. This is the main mechanic where the raid becomes chaotic and hectic if you don't control it. It is best to stay far away and try not to hit your party mates with the infecting lasers. The clown has three skills in your skill bar and those provide various advantages and disadvantages to the team. Let's go over the skills. The Q, the clown will throw a bomb, decreasing everyone's defense on hit. This is including your teammate as well. W, the clown will play his trumpet. Teammates inside a sound wave circle will lower their mayhem gauge, but teammates outside will gain mayhem gauge. When does he talk about the purple ball? It's just a gunslinger skill? What? <laughs> E skill. Clown will spawn a present box, which will need to be attacked and be opened with ether inside. If any teammates It's the not part of the raid! Team, but it will also create a small explosion around the taker, and anyone hit by this explosion will gain mayhem gauge. It is recommended to not use a W skill unless you're 100% sure everyone's around the area of effect. You can also spawn the present box away from the center of the map and attack it with a bomb to open it. Then you will have an extra ether ready for teammates to take. Oh, okay. I feel like I understand gate one. He took some notes. It's gonna be fine. Time for the exam. Kaku Seidon. 101 for peepers. Question 1. There is a mechanic that is like a bar mechanic in gate 3 of Vicus. What does it look like? The mayhem bar? It's like... Grey? Does that have a little picture of a clown? I'm just gonna say the, the mayhem bar. Oh, the madness bar. Okay, okay. This is gonna close. Close enough, close enough. What mechanic do you need to assign positions for before the first fight starts? How do you want to position yourself? You need to and position yourself in a cross for the mechanic. Find Sadon. Find the real Sadon. And you need to choose the cross thing because, um, looking at notes stringing that. It's an open book exam. Okay. He's either going to do the, this or he's going to do that. And you need to ping when he does this so that 
people know where to look. Four clowns in a corner appear. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. Nice, nice. Did I get everything right so far? I think I did. Okay. What happens if your madness bar reaches 50%? I don't know. <laughs> I'm... Uh... I'm pretty sure I wrote down that if it gets to a hundred, you become very, very squishy. I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I got, I, I've got this question wrong. A cross laser. Oh, the little, the little orbs, the little orbs, and then it so it shows you where the laser is going to appear. When hit by one of these, they fill your bar up a bit. Everything you get hit by after being 50 percent will trigger this laser. Damn. What happens if the madness bar is full? You become very, 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 very squishy. Oh, you turn into a clown puppet. Did I just not understand this video at all? <laughs> you turn into a clown puppet, you get three skills. Additionally, the boss takes three percent less damage per player that is currently a puppet. Oh, that's really bad, guys. Don't let your madness bar fill up. <laughs> right. What can you do after you have turned? You get three skills. Is that wrong? <laughs> you get to leave and get a snack. I don't know. I don't know what happens after you've turned. You get three skills! I got the first bit right! The Q removes the armor buff. The W reduces the madness meter for party members that are close to you. Everyone that is not close to you will have their meter slightly filled. Oh! Your E ability throws a gift box on the ground. Whoever picks it up has their meter reduced. Okay. What does Sidereal Inanna do? Sidereal Inanna? Well, let me tell you <laughs> what she does. If I was to guess, not that I am guessing, because I know. Oh, just drew on the outside of my book. <laughs> um, if I was to guess, I would say that Sidereal Adnana re re reduces the madness? Ah! Oh, using her will spawn an area where your meter will decrease. After the area disappears, you will receive a slight heal. I knew it. I, I, I knew that. I knew that the whole time. <laughs> what is important to pay attention to during the stagger check? The um the reflect, the purple reflect thing. Um, cause it cause you will die. Don't hit the purple shields. Yeah 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 yeah. If the four fake clowns appear, what is important to pay attention to? The the hearts or the guns. What? Oh, and the balls. Balls that orbit around the boss don't get hit by them. If the clown is doing fingers or guns or hearts, it's always three of one and one is the other. So face the clown that does the anemo. There's no one that's the Yes, I knew that. Yes. What is the Simon Says mechanic? Ah, the dance party. I believe that is what he is referring to is the dance party. The clown in question will do a pose and the um, players will need to check their skills because it's not the same one each time and do the corresponding. Unless he's facing the other way and then they have to do anything, any of the dances that he, did, that he didn't do. Show us the poses. I The only pose that I know is like this. That is what I believe the Simon Says mechanic is. Happens at 85 HP bar. Everyone gets a suit assigned and four emotes assigned to them. Depending on your suit, you must stand in the correct position when the boss does an emote facing you. You have to repeat the emote he does. The boss facing you must do any emote but that one. Yes. There is another mechanic that assigns suits. What is it? There's a few, isn't there? There's like one with like the pizza thing. And then there's one where you have to like guide the card to the to the right person the roulette so hmm how does that mechanic work uh i don't know <laughs> you get a card at the start and then you have to 
stand on the right one when the roulette stops. However, the background of this, the card is important, but I don't know why. After you are assigned a suit, you will see a rotating roulette appear. After the roulette stops spinning, you have to match your symbol to the one on the ground. After the roulette spins three times, it explodes. Where does the bra... Where does the bra want to slide to? I love these questions. Where does the bra want to slide towards? Here, right? Yes! Yes! There are two different ways on how the dice mechanic can go. What are they? Is that what I was just talking about with the with the guiding the card thing? I don't know what the other way is, though. So. I'm so fucking stupid. All I put here was dice rolling. Like what? Like I didn't write anything about it. The player will receive a suit of a certain color. Sadon will roll a dice and depending on if the color of the suit on the dice is the same as the one of the player. You have to do different stuff. What stuff? What happens if the color is the same? If the color is the same as the one of the player, well, then, uh, you, you go get it? If it is the same, the other three players have to move away from the bus and stand in a horizontal line. They will be unable to move the player that is free to move, has cards following him, and he has to kite them towards the player that matches card. If it is the same, that's when you get the guiding the card. What happens if the dice's color is the opposite of the player? Oh no. That player will be unable to move shortly after and will have cards flying towards him, same as the other mechanic. This time the other players can move and have to intercept the wrong cards, reaching the imprisoned player. What? <laughs> Questions inspired and picture taken from Maxwell, translated with some help by someone who doesn't want to be mentioned, but it would have been possible without him. Thank you, kind person. Ah! Made by Beam Lot. Thank you, Beam. Where's my pen lid? That's it, I know gate one now. But the servers are down, so I can't do it. Um. <laughs>